sign of Mr. Bedlow. He's going to be a mighty surprised railroad vice president when he wakes up and finds out his train's gone. Kate sure had a wonderful idea to sneak out of here while... Boyd, are you burning railroad ties again? <laughs> I just burned the loose ones. Besides, we need a quick fire. <laughs> you go tell your ma that if she can keep Mr. Bedlow asleep just ten more minutes, we're on our way to Pixley. Will do. before Charlie and Floyd can get up enough steam to pull out. We just got to see to it that Mr. Bedlow doesn't wake up before they leave. All aboard! That crazy bird! Phoebe, please, you'll wake Mr. Bedlow. Run and get her a piece of toast. Oh, and hide Uncle Joe's Indian. He found it again. <laughs> Not yet. Is he still asleep? Yes, but Uncle Joe's fussing around. He can't find his bathrobe. Well, I loaned it to Mr. Bedlow. And you tell him that Mr. Bedlow is sleeping in the bridal suite and not to disturb him. Well, Mom. Oh, Billy Joe, you start getting things ready so the minute Mr. Bedlow wakes up, we can quick serve him breakfast in bed and keep him there. But Charlie and Floyd and those salesmen ate up all the eggs. Oh, no. Oh, Betty Joe, go out and gather up some eggs, dear. Bobby Joe, you keep an eye on the upstairs. Okay, Mom. And you start cooking up some ham, bacon, and sausage and try not to burn it. Burn it! Burn it! You keep your big beak closed except for eating. <laughs> what do you mean, Mr. Bedlow, sleeping in the bridal suite? You ought to be sleeping in the barn. And I want my bathrobe back. Yes, Uncle Joe, Mother says he's not to be disturbed. Uh, we'll see about that. Hey! Shh, wake him! You know, what's got in that cave? City feller comes in here, shuts down the railroad, fires everybody. Ruins the hotel and she gets in the best room in the place. Kate! Shh! You're gonna wake Mr. Bedlow. That <laughs> chance. I'm buried three feet deep in the softest feather bed in the hotel. <laughs> Kate! Joe, please, you'll wake Mr. Bedlow. See, I want to ask you a question. I've got to take these to the kitchen there for his breakfast. <laughs> That's crazy. That's what it is. Feller deserves to be horse whipped. She treats him like royalty. Kate! <laughs> Mr. Bedlow. Now, Kate, listen. I'm... Quiet! You wake Mr. Bedlow. <laughs> well, at least you got an excuse to act like a bird brain. <laughs> Put these flowers in a nice, pretty vase. They're for Mr. Bedlow's breakfast drink. You mean he's getting breakfast in bed? As soon as he wakes up. I ain't a hearing right. I can't be. Didn't he sit right here at this table last night and say he was shutting down the railroad? Yes. And won't that shut down the hotel? Yes. Well, then what in the name of blue thunder oh, Mr. Bedlow's awake. He left his eggnog tray outside the door. Oh, eggnog well, tray? Well, we served him hot eggnog last night about midnight. To get him to sleep. Now, you go help your sisters get Mr. Bedlow's breakfast up to him. I don't want him having to come down to eat. Oh, okay. Now, Uncle Joe, you sit down there and I'll explain all this. What is there to explain? Mean city feller comes out here and wrecks her lives, so naturally we give him the biggest, softest bed in the place. Eggnog at midnight, breakfast carried to him in the bridal suite like he was a groom, and then you... Kate, you didn't... What? You didn't marry that viper, did you? That's <laughs> not. We're ready, what? Mom. Oh. Very nice. Pam. <laughs> Remember, girls, pretty smiles and happy talk. Ain't you going up and move his jaws for him so he won't have to chew? <laughs> Joe, I'm doing everything for a reason. Now sit down and I'll explain. I know, it looks like I'm being awful soft-hearted. Soft-headed. <laughs> Before Mr. Bedlow can give orders for shutting down the railroad, he's got to get to Pixley. The only way he can get to Pixley is on the train, and the train is here. Now, if we... It won't work, Kate. I see what you're driving at, but it won't work. You can't keep the train here. It's got to go into Pixley to take those salesmen that spent the night here. Well, Uncle Joe, well, your I... second mistake was in thinking you could change Bedlow's mind by being nice to him. Feller like that, you gotta 
outsmart, outthink. Uncle yeah, G. I got it, I got it. We'll sneak everybody but him onto the train and send it on into Pixley before he comes down. <laughs> Kate, you know putting him in the softest bed in the quietest room and taking his breakfast up to him was one of the luckiest blunders you ever made. <laughs> right into my scheme. <laughs> Who's blowing that locomotive whistle? My guess would be Charlie, he's the engineer. He'll ruin all my plans. <laughs> Darn fool's pulling out. We won't have time to wake the salesman. Well, they're on the train, Uncle Joe. How come? Well, I woke him up early. <laughs> Kate, this is your morning for lucky blunders. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, it worked. We heard the train pull out. And now Mr. Bedlow can't go into Pixley. <laughs> your idea was brilliant, Mom. I knew it would oh, work. Oh, well. Uh, wait a minute, girls. I in all fairness, Uncle Joe had the same idea. That's true, girl. He suggested your mother got up first and beat me to it. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Bedlow. All right. Whose idea was it to run off with my train and leave me stranded? Mr. Bedlow, uh, gentlemen are not permitted in the dining room in their robes. <laughs> I am no gentleman, and this is not my robe. <laughs> Do I get an answer to my question? All right. We'll let the government settle it. Stealing trains happens to be a federal offense, and everybody connected with this conspiracy is in very serious trouble. I hope this teaches you a lesson, Kate. Next time you get one of your crazy ideas, check it over with me first. I could have told you this would never work. <laughs> hey. Somebody's hit my Indian again. <laughs>
Nothing like music after a meal. What are you trying to do? Jump the track and get a song wrote about you like Casey Jones? <laughs> well, I figure the faster we go through Shady Rest, the less chance Bedlow's got of stopping us. We're better than 20 miles out of Shady Rest. Look at it this way, Charlie. The longer we take getting there, the longer Kate and her girls is going to have to work on Bedlow. That's true. I bet they're really melting him down. Oh, I'd sure like to be in his shoes right now. Floating like a zephyr on the soft summer Very nice. Lovely voice. All my daughters sing. <laughs> Girls, Mr. Bedlow being a railroad man, maybe he'd like to hear a railroad song. How about this one? There's a train that runs through this wide valley that is loved by one and all. It's the train that starts way up in Pixley called the Hooterville Cannonball. <laughs> well, she makes her run through the dead of winter, through the summer, spring, and fall. Neither cold nor heat nor blood can stop her. She's the Hooterville Cannonball. Yes, Mr. Bedlow, the folks in this valley depend on that train. It hauls the farmers' crops to market. It takes their children to school. It brings their supplies from town. And on Sunday, it makes a special trip just to take folks to church. <laughs> when my three babies were born, who came screaming through the night to bring the doctor to my side? The Hooterville Cannonball. <laughs> Her whistle speaks a language we all understand. To the children, it's a lullaby. To the young folks, a song of love. And to the old, a hymn of comfort. Mr. Bedlow, the folks in this valley haven't got much money. But as long as that little train runs, they'll never be poor. That's the Hooterville. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, I came here in anger, and you repaid me with kindness. I gave you bad news, and you gave me warm and friendly hospitality. You and your lovely daughters have taken the time and the trouble to explain what the Hooterville Cannonball means to you and your neighbors. After all of that, could any man say, scrap that little train? Just one. <laughs> Me. <laughs> the minute it gets back from Pixley. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bedlow, have a chair. Thanks, I will. <laughs> to Shady Rest and you'll tip off Bedlow we're coming. I think he knows it already, Floyd. Take a look. It's Bedlow. <laughs> right smack dab in the middle of the track. You think we ought to stop? <laughs> of course we're going to stop, you smokehead. That's one of Kate's best chairs. <laughs> Listen to me. I got something to tell you. Please. Wait a minute. Floyd and Charlie say they can't back all the way to Pixley. It'll be dangerous. They got to go on to Hooterville. Fine. I can cancel the train just as well from there. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, why are you so dead set on not letting this train run? It's bad business. Doesn't make any money. 
But he doesn't lose any. Floyd and Charlie are on pensions anyway, and they get their wood and water free. Mrs. Bradley, this train is the legal property of the CNFW Railroad, and we are legally responsible for everything that happens to it. If it runs off the track, if it hurts somebody, if it hits a cow, we're responsible. We can be sued. Well, Floyd and Charlie have hit lots of things. Nobody's ever sued. But they could. No, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bradley, but running this branch line just plain doesn't make sense. <laughs> doesn't it make sense to help folks when they need it? Bring the doctor when you're sick. Take little children to school. Forget it. It won't work. <laughs> I go up there and tell those two clowns the locomotive. They got 60 seconds to get this thing rolling or I'll cut off their pensions. Guess you win, Mr. Bedlow. I always do, Mrs. Bradley. you had a scheme to keep this old train running. Well, I have. That's why I'm going into Hooterville, but it's scary riding up here going so fast. Th th those things uh, ever blow up? This one never has. It just might today, though. Why? You're squeezing that pipe so hard, you're shutting off our water. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you go a little faster, Charlie. <laughs> I suppose you think that was pretty smart, my sitting in that coach while the engine went to Hooterville. <laughs> no, I thought it was kind of stupid myself. <laughs> I ought to knock you over that railing. You shouldn't have said that, Bedlow. No? Why not? Because it scared me. <laughs> Wait a second. Sit down. Okay. That stupid train the only way to get to Hooterville? No. There's another way. That's right. You mean somebody can take me? Yeah. I can take you. Now, now listen, old timer. I didn't mean to yell at you. I know you're not in this with these other people. I can see you're an intelligent man. You can? <laughs> now, I'm willing to pay you. No, no, I, I didn't ask for any money. I know you didn't. I'm, I'm forcing it on you. Now, come on, let's get going. this? I thought you were going to take me to Hooterville. I am. We'll never get there before tomorrow if you don't walk faster. <laughs> walk? No way you can get there outside the train. Well, why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask me. <laughs> Let me have my money back. <laughs> Indian giver. <laughs> Hi, boys. What's up, Kate? Oh, listen. Sam, I need your help. If we don't do something, Charlie and Floyd are gonna lose their train. Well, I hate to tell you this, but they've already lost part of it. <laughs> I don't mean that. Boys, you go on down and turn around and pick us up on the way back. Hurry up, boys. All right. Deputy Sheriff? Well, I never was a deputy sheriff. I was marshal of the 4th of July parade once. That's close enough. Come on. Well, what's this all about, Keith? Come on, I'll explain. Don't worry, girls. I'll handle Bedlow. You know, fighting the railroad's a man's job. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow got away. 
He's on his way to Hooterville. Oh, no. He found that old hand car and got it on the track. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow? I guess so. <coughs> Who are you? My name's Drucker. Hey! <laughs> Marshal Drucker from Hooterville. Marshal Drucker? He's a lawman. Thought you ran a general store. Yeah, I do that too. Also publish the newspaper. Yeah, plus being the postmaster. <laughs> and he's the mayor? Never mind all that. <laughs> no, if you're a marshal, arrest every one of these people. What's the charge? Stealing a train. You mean Charlie and Floyd's train? That's my train! Oh! <laughs> I'm the official representative of the CNFW Railroads. Marshal Drucker, do your duty. Yeah, be quick about it. All right. Mr. Bedlow, I hereby serve you with these 27 summonses, complaints, subpoenas, and overdue bills. What for? For the damages caused by your train during the past 20 years, and for supplies furnished and services rendered thereto by the citizens of this valley, as named of the complaints, etc., in your hands. Why, that's ridiculous. Totals up to about $150,000. Now, I wouldn't call that ridiculous. Baloney, what judge would honor that? Judge Drucker. <laughs> you! I demand a jury trial. Well, I don't think you could find 12 men around here that ain't in that bunch of complainers. Judge Drucker? Isn't there some way that this thing can be settled out of court? What do you mean, out of court? I got him right where I want him. Uncle Joe, please. Well, now, I'll tell you, Kate. If Mr. Bedlow was to go quietly back to the city and let Floyd and Charlie resume running their railroad, I might be inclined to show a little judicial leniency and postpone these cases indefinitely. Oh, don't do it. Let's have a big trial. Lots of people be good for business. <laughs> Well, Mr. Bedlow, what do you say? What can I say? You got me over a barrel. Well, come on, I'll back you into Hooterville. It won't be as fast as that hand car, but a heap less time. <laughs> well, Kate, you've pulled some beauties today, but letting him go is the biggest blunder of all. Well, you think so? Well, he admitted himself we had him over a barrel. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't blame you, Kate, but from now on, leave these things up to me. You know, fighting a railroad's a man's job. I'll remember, Uncle Joe. <laughs> <laughs> 